Hello and welcome to Stephen University. We are in the postgrad course, as 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 is as is listed in our title. Um, and as I pointed out last week, you know, not everyone attends the postgrad courses after university, and the few of you that are here, thank you. Um, <laughs> we are finally doing the big one. I suspect this might have some. This might generate some interest. This is this is an episode that we've been threatening <laughs> for a long time. And people have been asking for for a long time since our original review of this episode. So for some mild context, last week, you can go listen to this now if you haven't already heard it, we did a top five list of Steven Universe episodes. Chris chose his top five episodes, I chose mine, and the listeners via a survey chose theirs. And the episode that Chris and I felt sort of just middling about, like when we saw it originally, we enjoyed it, but like we weren't raving about it, was number one on the listener poll. So we thought it was finally time finally time chris to take another look uh, and, and 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 identify were we wrong about rose's scabbard now it's worth noting i've gone back and listened to the previous episode and i think a little bit exaggerated we were pretty positive about that i was episode. gonna say what what were we what did we when you said were we wrong i was gonna be like what did we say i haven't had a chance unfortunately to listen mm-hmm. um so yeah what was the what was our original feedback daniel yeah, well, it was interesting because it was uh, like, so there oh, there's a, a few things actually that I thought were funny. We talked a lot about the return of Crazy Ant Pearl. Um, we thought, you you jokingly t- so were talking about like, it takes Stephen far too long to realise that she's looking for the sword that's in Lion. Like, you you recognised it immediately as belonging to the sword from Lion 2 straight to video. <laughs> Right, okay. Oh, no, no, Lion 2, the movie, sorry. And you were like, why did it take Steven so long to realise? That was one thing. And then you were like, you said, and this is an exact quote, what was my mum like? His first fucking question in 44 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you said, this episode makes it apparent that he's not only not asking questions, but he's not giving answers. Yeah, He's like, hey, you know, Lion, um, I fucking pulled a sword out of him earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but like Steven's not been giving them that information like oh, I thought that on this rewatch as well I was like why is he not for someone that is so excitable about yes. fucking backpacks to yeah. think that he didn't say to them yeah. oh we went to a big place with loads of armor like <laughs> that's the thing is I sort of tagged that and said something like you know oh it seems like he got home after finding the armory and fighting that robot and was just like hey guys saw a film today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you enjoyed, but also found it kind of insane that he was storing a bike in a more efficient form of transport. Which is a which is a very be... good observation. Yeah, um, without being arrogant, then, that's some good work. Yeah, and, and it was a good one. It was a good one. Back in the days when we were funny, you know, Chris, before we, yeah. we got shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's all about the classic Stephen University. Um, so, um, you, what then, is, what, you're very bitter about this, don't like. <laughs> don't I, I, what's not... funny about that is no one realizes this, not even yourself. But I did a dab when I said that. <laughs> and you what, sorry? I dabbed when I said that. <laughs> Cla- <laughs> classic Stephen University dab. Um, anyway, um, so into the more serious stuff that we pulled apart. Those are just like the nitpicky ones that we thought were kind of funny, but we were sort of. Talking a lot about, well, we talked a lot about whether it was romantic and stuff, uh, because at the time it wasn't 100% clear yet what Rose and Pearl's deal was. We'll come back to that, because that is relevant. But I, we basically, the conclusion we came to is we think the episode is great, and we know it's a fan favourite, but we don't 100% understand, understand why. Uh, you speculated it might have been just its proximity to Rose and mythology, um, and I think the exact quote from, maybe me, I didn't write who wrote this, said this, but um, I do really like the episode but I don't get as excited about it as some fans do. Some fans have a personal connection to this and find it extremely emotional. Um, I love what we learn about Pearl, and it uh, it really fits well, and we see a growth and learn a lot about her character, and I think it's an important episode, but not one of the key episodes when, uh, that I think of when I think of this show. I don't know if that's just because... Uh, right, and I don't know if that's just because there are more important Pearl moments coming up than this. So that's me, obviously. Um, you big tease. And then you added that you weren't really sure that the episode resolved the conflicts you sort of said like pearl's a real dick and we never really receive see her return to the gems to apologize or apologize to steven because obviously she's just really harsh to him uh midway through this episode but you did acknowledge that it's kind of cool that the show will let its characters be dicks in the first place but you were you had some concerns regarding that but you did also praise the episode for not having a monster of the week 
um, mm-hmm. that it was sort of like focused on character stuff. So that's a summary, roughly. There's two points sort of left to discuss that we talked about later in this podcast. But that's the rough summary of our opinion of the episode. So having heard some of the stuff we said about it originally, how do you feel uh, How do you feel having come, back, coming, co- having come back to this episode? I felt a lot of that again. Um, like, I really enjoyed it. It packs an awful lot in for 11 minutes. Yeah, it does. Like, it's, it's, stunning, yeah. on, it's stunning on that front. Um, did I watch it and go, oh, I, I changed my top five and I would definitely include this now? I'll be completely honest, no. Um, I think there's, um, you know, I think Mr. Greg has my favourite Pearl and Rose stuff kind of over this. Um, I, I do think the Pearl, certainly her anger at Stephen isn't really res- resolved. I think the context is an amazing thing and watching it kind of knowing that, you know, she was Pink Diamond's Pearl and, you know, when she says, I'm going to stay here and fight, it's, you know, she she means against her own people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the context of this episode, once you've seen the rest, um, elevates it. Um, but I didn't, I, yeah, it's a really great episode. I, and you know, it's all personal preference. I'm not saying anything. I imagine it's, you know, the, the way I watched this show was all at once, uh, apart from when, you know, we caught up. So you kind of, mm-hmm. I imagine this was kind of, um, for people that, love you know pearl and rose and that side of things and sort of that mystery unfolding um over the kind of war and stuff this this must have been a huge episode you know when it first Mm. came out and you don't sort of you don't lose that feeling so i can completely see why it was the audience's number one last week um it it's it's one of those really weird things where it's like if you're essentially asking have i changed my mind no pun intended um no but i don't feel negative towards the episode so i don't really Mm. feel like i need to change my mind about anything because i don't i don't dislike it it's a really really great episode um Mm. so yeah you yeah uh, yeah i think you've summed it up i think it's like it's it's interesting because it was like i'm I'm listening back to our original review and i mean even just then when i started recapping the stuff we said i'm like yeah that's exactly how i feel which is that this episode is a really, really great start to that story. It's the first mm. hint of the deeper things going on. But the first hint isn't, you know, the good stuff. You know, the, the, and this is like, and, I, and I, mean, I mean this is with all due respect, like, but you're telling me the story exists. That's nice. But seeing the drama of it play out is what I'm here for, right? Like, setting it up is important. And without it, none of what follows works. Right, so this episode is important, and I said that in my in the original episode. I literally said those words. This episode is important, but there are more Pearl episodes that are you know that are more impactful for me coming up. And you can look at Last One Out of Beach City, or you can look at um, uh, Mr. Greg. You, you know, you, you take a handful of uh, even her her verse in the opening song of the movie. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, have mm. really get to the meat of it. This is the show teasing that meat exists. And that's wonderful, and it's part of what makes the early episodes of this show so amazing, is the way they just spend so much time and dedicate so much time really nudging us in these directions so we really get a sense slowly of what these characters are like and what their problems are um we have there's an element of this I, we'll have to talk about in a minute from that original podcast, which is your perspective on whether this was uh, romantic or not. I was gonna be, I, I found that really interesting a really interesting discussion going back but I think just to sum up my overall thoughts I think I feel exactly the same way about this episode um, as I did back then and I will say what's I think what might color some people's imperse, impressions and I don't want to make any assumptions I've actually gotten from that episode's comments some comments from listeners that I'll read out later to give them the voice you know because that's one thing we couldn't do in that original episode is is you know put the listener's perspective in because obviously they feel a little bit stronger about this episode than we do they li- they ranked it literally number 1 and it wasn't in either of our top 10s um so there's there's some there's a disparity there that you know but I still feel like it's a good but not top tier episode and um i think one thing that might color people's opinion of it and i'm starting to wonder if this is the case is the joy of seeing it in hindsight maybe enhances it a lot and i don't know if that's 
fair because it still has to stand on its own. And I actually think a lot of what's really cool about this episode when you watch it now is seeing her clasp her hands over her mouth and knowing because he's just he's just asked her, you know, tell me tell me what's up, tell me what's going on, and she claps her hands to her because she can't tell him physically because of the the whole yeah. pink diamond thing. The fact that that was there this early, and even Rose calls her my pearl. Yeah, I noticed that. Which, first of all, just also a head reference to my diamond, but also just a, a full on telegraphing of the ownership angle of their relationship which made it even more messed up it's all there and it's incredible how well this fits in any other show like this you'd go back to an episode like this and you'd find small inconsistencies things that don't quite they they kind of fit but like the phrasing you go that's not exactly the circumstances this is a perfect puzzle piece it's inc- it's incredible how intricate this is. And you definitely do feel the emotional weight of what Pearl is going through in this episode. And that is very important. But again, the meat and potatoes of that are where it goes next. And for me, setting it up is important but because nothing that comes after works without this piece. But this piece isn't what I'm here for. Do you know what I mean? So um, I, I will go through some of the listener comments in a, in a little bit once we've had a further discussion. But yeah, I, 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 my, and sadly, I, w- I really wanted to come in here today and be like, you guys are right. I've changed my mind. It's number one. But um, I, it, I, I feel all... exactly the same way about it as I did when I rewatched it that time. Is anyone claiming to be right or wrong? Like it's just opinion, no, surely. Uh, yeah, sure. No, no. I, I, I yeah. I'm, I'm obviously it's you know hyperbole and like you know just sort of like, but it, it's something we've been it's something that's come up a lot though that people didn't like, didn't agree with our original review of this just being good but not great. Um, that seems to have upset a lot of people. And you can and in and seeing that it being the number one result of the poll last week, you sort of go okay. That makes sense. That that's how strongly the listeners feel about this episode. Um, yeah. I don't agree, and that's fine. Um, but I, I think, I think for a lot of people, continually asking us to revisit this one, there was, I think, the, the uh, hope that we might, in hindsight, see some more of the, the the things that are amazing about this episode. And certainly, it does come through, but it's not. It, it doesn't change my base opinion of it you know when i'm just objectively analyzing it because because there are still as you pointed out in the original podcast very very astutely there's a lot of unresolved conflict here um the episode packs a lot into the 10 minutes and and what it sacrifices to make that function is an actual conflict resolution (laughs) like we never see her go back to the gems we never see her necessarily apologize to Stephen for both the horrific things she said and then one of the points i want to bring up and i'll get your perspective on chris so i'll let you i'll let this lead into that her just Letting him plummet to his death. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he leaps. He goes to fall. She just watches him. She does say, Stephen. But then he falls, grabs onto the vines. She's looking over, sees he's grabbed onto the vines, but is still struggling and dangling. His life literally on the line. And she goes to have a bit of a cry. What? Are you fucking kidding me? He's literally dangling for his life. And you can see him shaking as he tries to pull himself up. And she just she's she's fucked off. She's not even watching to see if he plummets to his death. What's that about? <laughs> Do you think there's an element of that symbolizes how consuming her love for Rose is? And that that actually it's meant to be horrific. She's meant to ignore him because when people are that emotional, when something's affecting them that much, that's what they do. That's very, that's very real. That, that, see, that doesn't feel in line with her character because it might be, I could see somebody in a, in a high, heightened emotional state panicking and not responding to a danger situation, you know, correctly, like freezing, like a badger in headlights. But, that's not been our experience of Pearl, who has always put Stephen's safety as a very high priority and is and is totally capable of very easily saving Stephen from that fall. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And yet she just... Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? She just sort of leaves him to it. And that felt off while really watching it. It just doesn't feel very true to Pearl. Even in a heightened emotional state, I couldn't see her... I couldn't imagine a world where the person who wouldn't even let him go to like the cold, she didn't want to even want him to go to where, 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 where was it? 
cheeseburger backpack where they, they where they went to that like tower and she was like just constantly worried about him getting hurt and then there was time they went to a, like a cold place and she made him wear a big jacket a big puffy jacket because she didn't want him to be cold like she's a protective she's a, she's bird mom you know so to see her seeing one of her you know to see her her you know essentially for lack of a better term like child i mean he she's his guardian just plummeting and then just to the initial reaction of Steven, but then just doing nothing else while he struggles seems insane to me. Rewatching that really jarred. I'm not going to lie. So between the conflict thing not being res- resolved and that moment, I don't know. But I mean, so, so were you just playing devil's advocate there, or do you do you do you genuinely think that you can kind of justify her sort of leaving him to it? Uh, no, I was playing devil's advocate. Um, I. Yeah, no. Personally, I would lean more towards your your side of the argument. Um, I mm. think there is you can you can explain it with that if you wanted to. I would understand someone suggesting that, and I think you know the that's you know without without praising the episodes that I love. That's what I love so much about Last One Out of Beach City. It's it, you know it's a gradual sort of if if Pearl in this state and and what's so amazing about the show if Pearl at this point was to see someone that looked like Rose, she would potentially, you know, have a really um, reactive reaction. Um, you know, she mm. um, that would really affect her. And it, it, it does affect her in Last One Out of Beach City, but not not in this way. And I think that character development, I think, like you say, that's, and like I said earlier, that's one of the benefits of this episode in hindsight. Like, you can track... Pearl's progression from here to last one out of Beach City, and I think that's really powerful. Mm. And to, to combat any comments, because I can already see it happening, is oh, Pearl knows Stevens like strong or whatever, so she might have just assumed he'd bubble. Or once she sees him on the vines and she knows he's no longer falling, she assumes he's strong enough to climb up or whatever. Again, that still feels not right to me. I feel like she would wouldn't want to take the risk of him not being strong enough to pull himself up from those vines. Mm. she doesn't even watch to see that he's getting up okay <laughs> do you know what i mean he could have just lost grip slipped fallen she wouldn't have even known she was back on the platform <laughs> it's really weird it's really it's really affected you hasn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it, on this viewing it that stuck out really badly which is a shame because i i you know i didn't think i'd have any further criticisms i was hoping to look for more things to like about it i ended up finding something that actually really stuck in my craw <laughs> I like I finished the episode, rewatched that scene. Just like, is, did that ha- play out how I think it did? And like, I literally pl- watched the scene again, just to be like, at what point does she move? Like, when does you know when what sequence of events is exactly? Just so I know I'm not mistaken. Seems yeah, it seems off to me. But um, you know, it, it look it's. I'm sure you know there might even be some comments in the in the, what that I've saved that will look at that. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think some people actually very much like that moment. So obviously I'm you know I'm in a minority there. Uh, and it, you know it's not a criticism I've seen comp a lot either. So clearly yeah. Um, in terms of other stuff, then let's talk about the relationship element of it all. So this is really interesting because at this point obviously it was the first hint to Rose Pearl. So you were obviously in the dark because you were not any further ahead than this episode. And I um, asked you what you thought about whether you read it as romantic, and you were like, I did read it as romantic, but I don't know that the show will go there. Because it creates... And then you pause, and you're like, it sort of makes you look differently at Greg and Rose. Um, The idea that he took her away from Pearl and crushed her in that way. I mean, props to the show if they go there, but it would surprise me just because there you go, that must affect her and Steven's relationship to some degree. He is a product of a relationship that w- she would have been jealous of or whatever. Um, so it would surprise me because of what that would mean for her opinion of Greg and her opinion of Steven. So you were very much of the opinion they wouldn't go there. And you made it very clear. It's not because you didn't think the show was capable of going to a like a female-female relationship, but just because you didn't think they'd be going that route dramatically. Um which I can understand when you're only 40 episodes into the show where, like, you know, problem of the week is generally, like, you know, Stephen wants fry bits or Stephen wants his ice cream. Like, the idea of them going to such a complex yeah. character place, I totally understand and understood at the yeah. time where you were coming from. But how do you feel about that, looking back at that statement now? 
Well, I don't feel silly or anything. Like you say, you can you can understand. No, no, no. I, I, I wasn't. This it wasn't an attempt to gotcha. I was. I just wanted your perspective on that now. Because <laughs> no, you like you really justified why someone would think that way, and then went. But how do you feel now? Now that you've seen Mister Greg, huh? Huh? How do you feel, Chris? <laughs> um, <laughs> I just, how do you feel, how do you feel looking back at like your like your perspective on it at the time like do you do, do you understand i understand where you're coming from but do you yeah no completely i think um i think absolutely i think it um and i think it just highlights how incredible the show is i mean as you were talking i was just thinking about mr greg and i was like boy you got no idea like it, they absolutely yeah. go there and do a do a beautiful job mr greg is the one episode we for those that didn't hear last week we dan the audience and i all put it as our second favorite um, <laughs> yeah. and i think that it, it it i don't i can see i can see it because you especially with the my pearl line you could if someone had said after watching this episode it wasn't romantic mm. i I would understand that because mm. you could look at it on a, with a romantic, you know, with romantic glasses and you could look at it with Pearl was a servant glasses. Turns out both are true. Um, so I think you could read it on the basis of this episode either mm. way in terms of how it feels to kind of think about that analysis i'm like i just love the show for like mm. actually going there and actually exploring it um and yeah so i except i think there's an awful lot of pearl and rose and getting over rose and pearl and greg i don't know how much we've had of steven taking over rose Rose essentially dying to give birth to Stephen and Pearl's reaction to that. We get a little bit of that in some of the flashback episodes. I think we get a, a, we get a hint stuff. to it in It's Over, isn't it? Because I think she literally says, and now I have to look after her son. She's sort of, she's echoing how like... Yeah. She, she, I, that, you know, that it's not direct because, you know, like all sort of motherly figures, she would never suggest replacing the child with the one she's lost obviously she loves steven you know no i think it's more the and and it's a difficult plot line to do with with steven born i almost want you almost want which i don't believe we had we want the flashback where rose tells the crystal gems what she's going to do <laughs> Right. Yes. Do you know yeah. What I mean? before, yeah. That's a that's a really good point, actually. Before like having... Stephen is Stephen, because we've seen the flashbacks of her meeting Greg. We've seen the flashbacks of Stephen as a baby. Do you know what I mean? We've not we've not seen the flashbacks of Rose going to the Crystal Gems and going. This is what's this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that's a really because of good course point. they love Stephen. That's never in doubt. But when she first announced that, and before Stephen was here, You're and right. Stephen was Stephen, they and would have had some thoughts. I would have, I would have been fascinated to see that that play out in flashbacks. And that's almost why they probably didn't deal with it because the reality is that's something she would have had to have. It it still lingers, obviously, but it's some, that's something she would have, ha have probably had to get over and deal with at the time. Yeah. And I guess actually we did see a little bit of her dealing with that and struggling in um is it three gems and a baby when the three gems don't know how to deal with Steven in the flashback and yeah, Pearl this... is convinced Rose is still in there and she's thinking I mean, we about need removing to... the gem. <laughs> you... <laughs> you want to talk about you want to talk about rewatches we should do. We should rewatch that one and not talk about religion for an hour. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> we yes. didn't we didn't talk for religion for that long, but we, yeah, it, it took up a good twenty minutes of that discussion. Um, um, uh, yes, but if memory serves, a lot of that became about the the will Stephen have powers and her memory angle isn't necessarily as as deep as I think you could have gone in a flashback. But yes, you did. No, you did sure. deal with that. I think I think I um, name checked that episode. You deal with that bit there. But there's sort of the hint in mm -hmm. terms of that angle, the, the her feelings. I think that is one area that, you know, a good flashback I, I would have liked to have seen explored more. But 
uh, you know, the the things I was talking about on the last episode, by the sounds of it, all of those I did get to see, and I didn't think that was the case. And it's just again a reflection of the of the awesomeness of the show and its ability to tackle such huge adult concepts and idea ideas well, you know, and and with real nuance. And yeah. like you know, subtlety to the point where you don't always realize that's what it's like. There's almost there's dual meaning to so many things in the show, and we actually like sort of in our stupidity hit on one when we talked about this episode originally because we both had a different impression as to why they were in the gem battlefield in the first place. So we were recapping the episode, and I said, "Oh, they're picking up weapons so they don't fall into the wrong hands they're sort of like they've decided to clean it up because they don't want humans to get hold of them and you were like actually i got the impression they were collecting them to use them because that we you know there's an oncoming threat you know homeworld is sort of starting to be you know be a little bit more interested in earth again and you know you sort of you know with lapis and stuff you sort of felt like maybe they were prepping and re-watching it it's both and it's actually very subtly done pearl tells steven that they're taking them away for you know, does it just keep them out of the wrong hands? Which could mean just humans stumbling across them, but it could also mean, you know, homeworld gems. But Garnet very much is like, well, you never know when you need one of these. Suggesting the plan is to use it, you know, and and, and while it's that battlefield it's, has just remained with the weapons and stuff strewn across them for, for thousands of years, thousands yeah. of years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're terribly messy. The gems. <laughs> um. So, yeah. Right, so there's a part like so even there in what is essentially a joke about Garnet saying like you never know when you might need an axe and Stephen's like yeah I always think I might need one of those or whatever you know it's actually telling us that they're telling Stephen one thing but the intention might be otherwise you know it's, it, even that has a subtlety and a duality to it and potential other meanings so when that's just and that's just a simple practical thing. Like, the it's cleverness a, they apply to all the emotional stuff is the same. <laughs> it's amazing, though, isn't it? Like, how... Because it absolutely is, and you're absolutely right. But there's also, like, the more you think about it, an angle of, like, man, why isn't Stephen asking questions? Because how that, how that would go in reality is, like... So what exactly happened here? Right, Stephen. <laughs> this big fucking hand appeared in the sky, right? <laughs> and uh, this beam came down and just destroyed all our friends like do you know what yeah. i mean like, and you know those no... you know those monsters we've been fighting that's them that's the all jolly, them <laughs> the jolly weapon collecting not once are they like oh shit this is some bad memories here yeah yeah that's a good point that's a really good point well i mean later on i guess but even then yeah it's kind of glorifies it doesn't it because pearl's kind of like when she tells a story at the end and it is a really emotional moment you know though it's the music and it's no dialogue it's really powerful to see her telling Stephen old, you know, glory day stories, but there is a part. Is that, of is, goes... is that the exact location of the final battle, though? To be fair, but uh, yeah, I'm not. Well, maybe I, it, it, there was. I mean, the fight there wasn't really a final battle, was there? There was. There was no point. Did they win? Essentially, they were winning, and the diamonds played dirty. <laughs> you know, the diamonds cheated. They just took everyone out because <laughs> they couldn't be doing with it. So, like there really wasn't a final battle as such, but Pearl's telling, you know, glory day stories and there's actually a really dark undertone to that because it's portrayed in this episode as a moment of of catharsis, right? But when you actually think about it, it's quite dark. I mean, she's telling a story about yes, a war that again, killed a lot of her friends. But again, that's kind of what's beautiful about the episode from a Rose and Pearl perspective, because yeah. that was the most purpose Rose ever had. That was the that was the freest most, yes. pink diamond ever was. That was yes. that was genuinely in Pearl's head, pink diamonds glory days. So yes. it's not and and it does play that well. You never feel like she's glorifying the war, glorifying no, no, no. the deaths of her friends, or you know, she's glorifying no, no. Rose. Yeah, I, I just want to be clear. Yeah, I'm not I'm not criticizing the episode for that. I think it's clever the way they do it because it, the, the dark undertone is clearly Pearl's almost oblivious to it. She's blinded by the light that is Rose, and that you know, and and because she people do deify those that they've lost. You know, they do sort of put them on these pedestals, and, and Rose being the leader of their of their sort of um, war effort, like even more so. You know, and that's not even touching on the personal relationship she clearly had. 
with Rose. So I know I told it's it's it, it's intentional. It's by design, and it's really well done. I wasn't sort of suggesting that as a criticism mm. that they're ignoring the the, the thing that like Pearl's character definitely would, <laughs> um, you know. So you can stop writing your angry comments. <laughs> well, speaking of, speaking of comments, I'm fascinated to get to that. So what were the yeah, let's, let's what were the comments? Some, what so, sort so of yeah, the audience's I just, I, voice? Yeah, I just thought it would be the fairest thing to do would be to like you know they, they they've been sort of essentially prodding us to do this again because they did they felt like we didn't you know that we didn't quite capture it when we talked about this originally so i figured let's look at the comments from that episode more than two years ago now um and and see what people said so we've got um first comment here from je just je is the username uh this is one of my favorites not so much because of the presence of rose that's obviously a direct response to what we said in the episode when we were speculating why this was so popular um but because I love episodes that really delve into the character's emotional state, this was a good first exploration of Pearl's feelings of loss. Not only that, but the ending montage was beautiful. The way she doesn't even smile at the end, but just looks ahead. Slightly more determination is a great way of showing that she's making progress, but still distraught. Um, so, yeah. And then they added the whole romantic versus loyalty aspect was kind of funny to hear with the benefit of having seen future episodes, which is, yeah. Um, I also found it really interesting to hear that conversation, knowing. Um, but, yeah. I think I, you I, could, I could completely understand someone watching this and enjoying the character of it without being too annoyed about the fact that you could argue, at least from Pearl and the Crystal Gems point of view, it doesn't get resolved. Like, I get that. Mm-hmm. Like, that won't be important or as important for some people as it was for us. Like, and yes. there's a hell of a lot of great character stuff here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but again, yeah. for me, it's the start of that character stuff, and that is this is what I said earlier. But my response to that would quite simply be, I, I, you, you've you've particularly um, enjoyed the setup for that story, and that's great. And I'm, I wouldn't take that away from anyone. For me, the payoff is where I'm most likely to get my enjoyment, the actual exploration of those ideas, not just the sort of setup of them. So while this episode is again important to establishing where Pearl goes, it's not the episode that actually like sends that message home you know there are several more that deal with that and in my opinion deal with it better um so yeah that's what it is but i I, totally valid position to take um our old friend uh, fretzel added the fan favorite status is absolutely because the last scene at the battlefield it's fantastically written drawn voiced and soundtracked and the result is a really emotionally powerful uh, is, is really emotionally powerful for a lot of people um for me, it's not the most important Pearl moment, but it's maybe the most moving one in the way it conveys a lot of the tragedies of her character. Very, very good point. Mm, absolutely. Um, it, 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 it does... It, it, like there is a like as I mentioned, there's a dark undertone to that whole scene at the end that does really sort of... like It does encapsulate a lot of what she goes through. Again, doesn't explore it as thoroughly as later stuff. So that's, again, why I sort of bump up against it. Um, Jeeves wrote favorite episode right here. Uh, teared up, uh, teared up upon many reviewings, and it still gives me chills today. Um, mm. um yeah. I, again, I, I don't. I, it's, it's one of those things where I think this is just like a personal preference thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Looking at, uh, we got a comment from our, from our old friend Cram. Um, the rose stuff is a nice bonus, but come on. Clearly, Pearl is what makes this episode because it's again responding to us saying that maybe it's the rose of it all that was maybe making it a fan favorite. Um, true, there are other really big Pearl moments, but this one was the first, and it brings important context to the others that follow. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. That's that's in my in our original review, I think. Um, but again, it doesn't quite. Uh, it's yeah, it's not as good as some of the other stuff that comes after it. Um, I think is this the final one, Andrew Stork. <laughs> I don't, I don't think you need to remind of your your position every time someone, every time there's something. I know that well, the thing is, I didn't realize, I didn't realize how much these comments all made the same point. I was expecting to respond to each one, and I've come to a position <laughs> where I've realized what I've done is they they all actually say something quite similar. So I should have just read them all and then responded. But I started by responding individually, and then I've carried on despite the fact that's kind of pointless. Um, I think the reason this episode is so popular is because it's the first. First real look at how deep Pearl and Rose's relationship was. Uh, this is from Andrew Stalker, by the way. I'm sure there are better Pearl and Rose episodes later on, but this was the first one. Personally, I just love the scene where Pearl... Pearl. Oh, I see, here we go. This is the one I was talking about. Personally, I just love the scene where Pearl almost lets Stephen die. Mm, she lets, potentially, Stephen die. The only way, the reason that's almost is because he crawls his way back up, but yeah. Um, and her sort of shocked reaction 
when she looks like she's thinking, what have I just done? It's one of the darkest moments of the show. Um, yeah, it is, but I'm not sure it's a... I'm not sure for me that's a good one. <laughs> no, I think I think the argument is the devil's advocate one I made last time. I know the, the commenter hasn't said this, but I think that logic of... Like that, I think that comment is... Um, enjoyment from the what have i done moment is like that's her snapping out of oh Mm -hmm. shit like i've Mm -hmm. gone too far i've got too swallowed up by this maybe you know maybe that's something that leads to you Mm. know where she ultimately ends up um yeah Mm. um so yeah those are the comments um anything particularly there that struck you or is it is it is it what you kind of expected you had yeah, I, I, I completely get it. Like it's like you say, it's personal preference. A lot of this stuff. Um, I think that it. Im, I imagine, like especially if you're, you know, on the forums and exploring, you know, the the healthy debate and about you know whether it was it was love and whether it's a romantic thing that followed after. And you know, if that's one of your favorite elements of the show then this is absolutely going to land and get you really excited. So I can completely see why it was number one on the audience favorite list. Mm. Like there's some amazing Pearl Rose stuff here. Do I personally prefer Mr. Greg? Yes. I mean, it's not a point you've made, but I know that you and I are fans of, you know, those moments that come later and those moments that resolve those things, not necessarily just set them up. I don't think you've mentioned that, Um, but I just know you well enough to know that's how you feel. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think 100% that's, that's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> you're just not rising to that, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm having a good time, if that helps. Uh, yeah, good. Um, I did, oh man, look, I, I've not mentioned it, but Chris, I wrote a joke into my notes. You ready for my joke? Oh yeah, go on. So I was talking, I wrote in my notes that I like the flashbacks through hologram and using Pearl's voice. Um, I thought that was a really interesting way to do a flashback mm, rather great. than just doing an outright flashback. I thought that was clever um, because also it could potentially be an unreliable, an unreliable narrator element, not far from what happened, but possibly viewed through rose-tinted glasses. Boom! Great. Got it! Dunk shit! Great gag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you needed to reveal that was planned. I could have just said that and I'd have felt like a genius. No, I wrote that. Like I'm, not, I'm, I'm not dishonest enough to pretend I didn't pre-write that joke. But I wrote. I was, I was actually writing my notes and I like a little chuckle to myself. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> like I was like really pretentious about it. Um, so I definitely had to point that out. Um, I, I do. I, I must as well. Must admit as well. In terms of like powerful moments, like the moment when Pearl says, "You know, you didn't even know her," to Stephen is like heart stopping it's savage in so many yeah. ways and what's wonderful about this episode what i one thing we've not talked about very quickly because we should move on but steven is unbelievably patient and nice with pearl in this episode yeah he never brings that up again he never um punishes rises to it. it yeah he never gets angry back at it he just wants to help he goes after her he wants to address it. That's why I'm, I, I suppose, even though I did mention at the beginning, they don't really resolve that she said some mean things to Stephen. They sort of do in the sense of, it's very clear Stephen doesn't care. He understands well, what she's Well, do you think as from. well? Because one of my favourite moments, just because for all the context it gave and that mm-hmm. I just really like Amethyst, was Amethyst going, I hate when she gets like this. Do you think to some degree, our, our complaint, again, just trying to, you know, show both sides, play advocate, our complaint about it doesn't get resolved with the gems. Do you think in some ways Amethyst going, I hate when she gets like this, making it clear that it happens, it's happened in the past, it's something she does, kind of sets up a world of, oh yeah, she just does this and therefore it's it's understood and it's fine sort of thing. Or, you know, they're used to it. In the way that we don't see Stephen go, I forgive you, he shows that he forgives her. Do you think you could make an argument of the because Amethyst has said that the gems are just used to it, so they automatically also do, of course, forgive her? Yeah, and I guess as well, if we're following the rule of Stephen and Stephen's perspective, maybe that happened not in front of Stephen. Therefore, we didn't see it as well. That's oh yeah, no doubt it happens. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, maybe. So you know. yeah, maybe that is an unfair, an unfair criticism. 
Uh, that it doesn't really. No, feel I don't think it is. It's just one of those like shame that the episode isn't twenty two minutes long to see that as well. Although the, that <laughs> yeah. montage at the end where we don't hear what she's saying is wonderful, and it would. Mm. If she then went back and said sorry, and they went, "It's okay," it would, <laughs> it would detract maybe somewhat from that ending. Yeah, it would. I think it would. Yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe that, maybe we're, you know, that that isn't as valid a, a, a criticism as as, as it seems. Um, very briefly, um, let's quickly spin through the the old triv. Um, oh, are we still triv. not doing triv at this point? No, we weren't doing triv at this point. No. Wow. Blimey. No. Um, so, uh, this episode was originally going to be titled Rose's Secrets. Mm. Plenty more of them to come. Yeah, maybe that's why they didn't use the title, to be honest with you. This is tip of the fucking iceberg, <laughs> to be honest. Um, um, there's a mention here of, obviously, the My Pearl thing, which you've already talked about. Um, now, I, I briefly mentioned this in our original podcast, but in Spanish, this episode's title translates to The Wrapping of the Sword of Rose, and in Brazilian Portuguese, it's called... Um, it's, tra- it's, it's Brazilian Portuguese title, it translates roughly to The Sword of Rose. The reason neither of these use the word scabbard or sheath is because apparently in both languages, the actual word for scabbard... Um, is similar to the Latin word for vagina. Well, hey. So they didn't want it to come across like a double entendre, so they shifted the uh, titles. I think that's... Wow. (laughs) I think think that is the first time since we've done Stephen University that the word vagina has been said on the podcast. (laughs) Yeah, unless I said it when I said it originally, which it's possible. Because I think that one did come up, maybe. So, yeah... um... So well, go. hold on. If we weren't doing Triv at the time, you think you just slipped that one into conversation? I think I might have done because that's hilarious and it doesn't spoil anything. So I felt maybe I felt confident slipping that one in. Um, here's an interesting uh, one. Yeah. Uh, well, you've. If there's one thing to be said about you, Dan, it's that, that, that in those in that area, you're always comfortable slipping that one in, aren't you? Yes. I didn't have a tag for your joke, so I just said yes. I think it's best not to. <laughs> Yeah, that's a dark path. We don't. Yeah, that path. This way leads to ruin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could not acknowledge it because when you yeah. said slipping one in, everyone was thinking it, so I had to acknowledge <laughs> it. But I think it's best. Right. Let's focus. Focus, Chris. This is a good one. Um, in the comments on an Instagram post, Rebecca Sugar stated that when Pearl is inaudibly, uh, what Pearl is doing is inaudibly telling Stephen a war story, um, and what she's saying is, and out of nowhere, when it seemed impossible. Rose charged in with me by her side. Gosh, she's a bit arrogant when she's telling these war stories, isn't she? Christ. <laughs> a little bit. We get it. Jeez. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, as Stephen is pulling Rose's sword out of Lion, um, the track that he sort of hums and sings is actually the piece of music that played when Lapis was reforming in Mirror Gem. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, just a weird little, little thing. Um... And then this is one of the few times they ever refer to a shattered gem as broken, not shattered. Um, I guess maybe because it was earlier in the show, they were like the language hadn't been quite settled on yet. But Garnet refers to them as having been broken. Yeah, that feels like something that is just one of those they hadn't quite pinned down that element things. Like the terminology, yeah. Um, So I think that's all. Is that everything? Did we do it? I think you. I, I think, like you say, it's. I think both of us wanted to come to this going. We've completely changed our mind. We were wrong for this reason, this reason, this reason. It, it is a shame that both of us watched it and went. Yeah, no, I think what we said is, is you know, fair. I like but it, I, and that's what's weird because it feels like we're being really defensive this episode, and it's not what I intended to do. Like when I got, uh, you know, listener comments, it was to give them a voice in this episode, and it. Unfortunately, like it, it, it didn't change that. That you know, it, I respect everyone's position on it, and I think it's really good that everyone's found that to like about it. But it doesn't really change what we feel about the episode. I think, the th- yeah, I think the thing is, we don't, we don't now, nor did we then, disagree with any of those points. It's just personally not connected mm-hmm. in the way that Mister Greg does, or or Last One Out of Beach City, or even something like a single pale rose, where it's mm. you know if you want to if you want to take it away from character and and bring it to mythology and plot, like mm. a single pale rose, it's like like mind blowing. Yeah. Um, so 
I yeah, in terms of favourites, personally there are others higher, but I wouldn't disagree with anyone's love for this episode. I completely, completely understand. No, and the intention of doing this episode was to sort of like, because we, we said at the end of the last one, it's not fair for us to talk about this episode that clearly we you know we didn't like love. Um, so I oh, I'm glad to... we. I wouldn't have yeah. I wouldn't have felt it. W- it wouldn't have felt right having this discussion then because I I would have yeah. been like yeah I don't really remember. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I wanted so... to one. I wanted to talk about it like objectively fairly as I could with you know having seen it more recently, and I wanted to, I I really felt like it was important to grab a few comments from the listeners since it was their number one choice. Um, so that I'm glad we got to do that. Um, so yeah. Um, we have a thing to announce, I guess, don't we, Chris? Yeah, I think we can probably announce that now. Yeah, yeah well, it's the, it, it'll be the next thing released to the channel, probably, so we probably should. Um, oh, yeah, because this isn't, we're just recording this. Uh, in my head, I was like, we're not we're there yet, but this we're recording this early, aren't we? Yeah, correct. Yeah, so, the, so from listener's perspective, it's, what day are we putting this up? The 23rd? of October. We're recording this on the 8th. We just get we just we just get this done early to, so it's recorded and we don't have to, you know, panic fit it in on that week or anything because our schedule's looking at a bit tight going forward. Um but from your perspective listeners, um the 23rd we are 2 weeks away from launching our new project that we've been teasing on here for a while. Now, if you're on the Patreon, you'll be getting it a week from today. So if you have yet to sign up to our Patreon, patreon.com slash nothingbutstaticuk, you might now have some incentive, as little as $1 a month, because... We're doing it, people. Nothing but claps. It's happening. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) That would be amazing. I do still Um, want to do nothing but claps. It was nothing but claps that we talked about doing, wasn't it? Yeah, on our our, our main podcast, Nothing But Static, Chris really wanted to do a podcast just all about clapping for the Patreon. Um, we are I, we are going to do it one day. Okay. I don't. I've decided because I think you said, "Oh, if, if people comment or show interest," blah, 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 and no one did. But when have you ever waited for other people to request things, Dan, before forcing stuff upon me, podcast wise? So I'll, t- I'll tell you when, Chris. With, with this one. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. This one's. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about this, Dan. We're not talking about this yet. <laughs> I'm taking a moment to talk about <laughs> nothing but claps yeah. coming soon to pay. I've already worked out the first question, Dan. Yeah. Have you ever had the clap? See? There's and it, it can only go to many different places from there. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a clap based podcast. Yeah, okay. That is not the the project we've been teasing for weeks. I just want to make this very clear. That Chris has chosen the most inopportune time <laughs> to basically hype up a podcast that like is probably going to last one episode. <laughs> oh yeah, it's only gonna it's only gonna be it's gonna be a special, yeah, yeah. Right. So what gotcha. off, yeah. Okay. Anyway, separate to that, guys. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, when we started doing this, God, I think part of the thing is Dan, you're acting like people don't know exactly what you're about to say. <laughs> but carry Some on. Some people might not. I don't know. But basically, uh, when we it's came the back... most guessable thing in the world. But yeah, again, is. continue. It is. Um, <laughs> uh, when we did, so when we sat down to do our revisit of um, Lars and the Cool Kids, the first episode of Steven Universe Postgrad, we talked about how we'd kind of been a bit daft and what we really should have been doing was doing a podcast on Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, we finished recording that podcast and then <laughs> before we released it, like the same day, in fact, it was the same phone call, I think. I think we literally stopped recording and then it became very clear we were going to do it. Now, there were some caveats to us doing it um, that will explain why it's been such a big wait. We decided we wouldn't start releasing it until we were at least 10 episodes ahead so that we could we had the leeway, scheduling-wise, with a weekly podcast. That's been tricky for us to manage. I mean, even these Stephen University postgrads have been once every two weeks, with the exception of this one, which I think was three or four weeks since the last one. Um, oh no, the last one was three or four weeks since the last one, um, the top five one. Um, but they've mostly been every two weeks. To keep a weekly schedule up with the inconsistent sort of timings for us, the only way we could really make it work was if we got really far ahead so that if we ever miss a couple of weeks, we can always make it up later. The second thing was that we didn't want to lose Rewind Reviews. So, next week on the Patreon, two weeks from now on the YouTube channel, 
Analyzing Avatar, The Late Airbender, will start. It is a podcast where Chris and I will be going through Avatar The Last Airbender, episode by episode. But after we have done season one, we will be taking a break for eight to ten weeks to do more Rewind reviews before getting on with season two. And that is the pattern going forward. There will be weekly content on this channel, 20 weeks of Avatar, uh, analyzing Avatar The Late Airbender, 10 weeks of Rewind reviews, and so on and so forth. Um, Steven University will just be a sporadic thing that we do when we get a chance. Um, there was a really good suggestion made this morning that we take a look at the new... They've just put out a new book, um, like End of an Era, I think it's called, which is a new art book that has loads of information, you know, from stuff that we never got to see, fusions we never got to see, names of gems we didn't see. Apparently, it's just absolutely chock full of new information that really adds to stuff that we didn't already know. So um, I'll be maybe getting through that at some point. Maybe we'll do an episode where I, you know, we go through some of the information included. But as of, uh, let me get the, I've got the exact dates in front of me. The 27th on the Patreon and the 3rd of November on this channel, you'll be able to get Analyzing Avatar and that will be weekly going forward. There we go. It's been announced. It exists. Boom. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so far, the episodes have been good. There's less, uh, there's less bollocks, you'll be pleased to hear. Uh, <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. some, some genuinely concise analysis. Um, I guess because it's a longer show, who knows. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's yeah. good fun. I, mean, I don't think I could, I don't think we could describe the very first episode as concise. The first episode we really, like, the first episode we were clearly a bit nervous because we were just like, we were very aware that it was a new podcast and not everybody listening would be have listened to Stephen University. So we go to a lot of effort to yeah, explain. We'll be, we'll be way more, we'll be way more relaxed for um, nothing, nothing, nothing but claps because, uh, uh, well, no one will be listening, um, but yeah, exactly right. Um, yeah, so it, it's pretty exciting. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really excited to be doing this. Um, it's worth noting, Chris technically has seen uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender for at least the first season. Or he saw, he saw the first season. Um, doesn't remember any of it. What is what we're discovering as we go through it? Not a bit. Every time we do a new episode, he's like, nope, don't remember this one either. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty much the same format as Steven University in that Chris is a newbie and I'm sort of like a, you know, recently rewatched it. Um, but uh, I, I thought it wouldn't be that for the first season. It still is, because Chris's memory has failed him massively. <laughs> yeah, again, I don't, because this comes up on the podcast. I just, it's like five, <laughs> six years ago and like I watched it all very quickly. Yeah, I don't remember it. No, but I think that's, I think that's, I know, I think that's I think reasonable. That's, yeah, it is. It's just interesting because it's like, I feel like now you'd be watching with more of a careful eye, like having watched Steven Universe. But you know, you'd be, now you'd be sort of watching it with it. Could be, could I think, but I think part of your previous sort of cartoon expectations was not necessarily necessarily to look for like deeper character stuff. You were just like enjoying it, which is fine, and that's a perfectly valid way to watch any of these shows. But obviously, now watching it with an eye for you know, five years from now, you'll remember the episodes because we're doing a podcast where you're forced to actually, like, you know. Yeah, but it's hard to tell whether that's um, a changing the way it's being watched or talking about it for forty five minutes after every episode. Right. Yes. True. I yeah, think the, is... the only the only show that I the 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 show the only show you can really judge that on is is Infinity Train because that's the only show that I just watched for the sake of watching um, of this kind of genre. Mm-hmm. Um, and at some point, that when I've caught up, we will at some point do a bonus Infinity Train episode as well. Uh, yeah, where, it's Dan, good. where we talk about me watching it, um, but we don't yes. know when that will be because I I just I tell you what, powered through seasons one and two and just haven't I haven't done season three yet. Don't I know. think when you got sent the episodes, you didn't have all of season three. So I think initially you were just waiting to have it all. Yeah, maybe. And then you've just not found time, but that's fine. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Season three is amazing. I, I'm really excited. Yeah. So there'll be a rambling review episode at some point going up. And it'll be, you know, rambling review bonus, Chris's thoughts. And it'll be it'll me just poking Chris and saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? <laughs> what do you think of this bit? <laughs> <laughs> which i'm excited to get your perspective on so yeah um uh, that's coming as well so yeah subscribe to the channel if you haven't already patreon as i mentioned patreon.co.uk slash uh, sorry patreon.com slash nothing but static uk uh youtube.com slash nothing but static uk as well um, actually no patreon.com slash nothing but static sorry 
It's Patreon. The, the UK bit is only on the YouTube channel name. Ugh. Should I start that again? Patreon.com slash nothing but static. YouTube.com slash nothing but static UK. Mail at nothing but static dot co dot UK if you want to send us a little email. Uh, you can comment down below. Obviously, review us and like us on all of those various platforms. Um, when analyzing Avatar launches as well, we're going to very much encourage you guys to review with a new podcast. It makes a really big difference if you review it and you know on iTunes and Google Play and Amazon and all those places. Massive, massive difference. So I'd really appreciate anybody listening to it through an audio platform to, to make that effort um, at the time. Um, obviously, I think we say that in that first episode, but it, heads up now, guys, if you can be ready to like, go with that. That that will pu- push us up the charts to start with. And you, th- There's a real chance when you launch a new podcast that you might get into like Apple or Amazon's like new and featured. And if you get into that, that's a really big boost. And you can only really get that in the first few, like in the first like, month or so of your podcast launching. So it's, it's an opportunity we don't normally have with these because these have been these are roughly but these are all long-running podcasts so yeah we'd appreciate that um so there you go we're going to be looking at avatar i'm very excited about it sporadic steven university is in somewhere in there when we find time um but otherwise yeah stick around for that i'm i I, I keep saying it but i am really excited for you guys to start hearing us talk about avatar yeah it's been good fun it's been great fun Mm mm-hmm Cool. So that's everything for this week. I'm sorry that was a bit of a ramble at the end there, but there's a lot to a lot to clarify with that. Um, but thanks very much for listening. To those of you who listened, sorry to those of you who are sad. We haven't changed our minds on Rosa Scabbard. Uh, but I'm glad you guys like it. And blah, blah, blah. There's better Pearl moments in the future. Um, <laughs> recap that one more time for good measure. Um, now I've hammered that nail in. Thank you very much. I've been Dan Doolin. <laughs> A big Chris Billingham. We'll see you next time on Dan Repeats Himself 90 Times. Stephen Uvesi. <laughs> Postgrad. It's just great. There's just better pearl moments in the future, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Did I say that? Did I mention that? Yeah, like, you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> it's in my notes somewhere. <laughs> It's all over your notes. It's the only thing I wrote. It's It's shining. It's 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 the header of your document. It's like the shining. It looks like a full document with lots of different sentences, but all it just says is that over and over again. (laughs) All work and no play makes Jack a dull. Uh, uh, Pearl's got better moments in the future. (laughs) Bye. Bye.